In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I build my Ableton Live sessions for worship using tracks that I get from loopcommunity.com. My name is Jake Gosler. I'm the creator of churchfront.com, helping worship leaders lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. And I'm a huge Ableton Live fan, and I'm a huge Loop Community fan. I love how Loop Community is providing really quality tracks for worship leaders and worship ministries, and they have some quality products, hardware products, to help you play those tracks back. But in this video, I just want to talk about the software end of things. I really like using Ableton Live to run tracks in worship, also to automate lyrics and lighting in worship. I lead worship at a small church plant in Lakewood, Colorado. We have about 100 people on a Sunday. In our band, we have about four or five people on a Sunday. So we're pretty average sized worship ministry, but we love taking advantage of the tools available to us. So let's go ahead and I just want to walk you through how I build my Ableton Live sessions for worship. The first thing I do is go to Planning Center and see what songs I'm doing on a Sunday. Um, and if it's a newer song, we have to make sure that we have all the tracks. For example, uh, here is the set that's coming up for uh, this company. Sunday and we're doing the song Another in the Fire by Hillsong United. This is a brand new song on their latest album and uh, we, we actually um, had to just acquire the tracks for that. So in order to do that, we went to loopcommunity.com and we just logged in uh, to my Loop Community account here. And I actually already went through the purchasing process for Another in the Fire. So I'll show you though real quick, basically what I do is just find the song I want because there's a couple different versions of tracks that you can purchase from Loop Community. So I go to another in the fire here, and then I am going to always purchase the full zip file version of the track. So here we see there's a track by Loop Community, and it says Prime and Zip. So if I were using the Prime app, I could do just the Prime only. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, but I like to have the actual zip file containing the WAVE audio files, and I can load those into Ableton Live. So I'm gonna select Prime and Zip, and uh, this is where I would purchase them. And what's great is that these aren't the master tracks for this song, but these are the tracks that uh, Loop Community and their team of musicians and producers create. And these tracks are super high quality. They sound phenomenal. I love using them on a regular basis in my worship ministry. Uh, and the price point of these tracks for being the full stems for this song uh, is just really reasonable. So once you purchase the tracks, they're gonna show up in your account, in your Prime Cloud. So here is our Prime Cloud. I'm gonna go to Purchases here, and then this is where I would download the zip file containing all of the Wave audio files for this song. So after a few minutes, once those WAV files download, what I do is I like to store all of my files on an external hard drive. So I have this uh, Samsung portable solid state drive, it's a T3, 250 gigabytes, it holds lots of tracks. I got like over hundred songs on here, the full backing tracks uh, as well. Um, and then in my hard drive, I have it organized into my Ableton Live templates and resources, my individual song sessions, and then my worship set list. So the first step when I get the backing tracks is to create my individual song project. And this is so I can build out my Ableton project for one song, do it once, and then it's, it's done forever. And I can even put in my lyric automation into that song so I'm not having to build in the pro presenter cues every single week, but I do it once and then on a weekly basis, I'm building these worship set lists that you see down here in folder three. So for this song, we actually already went through and created our projects. We have a folder for another in the fire, and then we created a unique Ableton Live project for it. And I'll open that up for you so you can see what this looks like. And here is the project. So the first thing you'll see is I do prefer running my tracks in arrangement view. I feel like it just gives me a good perspective of what's happening over time. I love working within a timeline. And you're gonna see that we have the original audio files uh, that we downloaded from Loop Community here. So these are our backing tracks for the song. And then up here, I create some custom tracks to just make my Ableton uh, workflow a lot more efficient. So on top here, I have my markers track. This is how I label the different song sessions. Then I have a tempo track where I have a tempo clip that tells Ableton Live what the tempo of the metronome should be. I always like using Ableton Live's built-in metronome. Uh, we do have the cl a click track that's for the audio click file, but actually I usually leave this one disabled because I use Ableton's built-in click. Then we have the guide cues. 
Um, and then we have a track for the M original MP3 file for this song that I buy from iTunes. I put it into my session and then we can hear that song playing back. Um, and then we have um, a Pro Presenter cues track. So here we have all the different slide cues for this song. So we do this once, we build out the slide cues and it's good to go. Um, and then, like I said, we have all the audio files down here. One of my first steps uh, that I take in my workflow is building this individual song session, and then I can start dragging this session into our weekly worship set lists. So now I wanna show you what our Ableton worship set looks like for this set list that you see here in Planning Center with these five songs that we have coming up this Sunday. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a recent set, and it's gonna be this one right here. While that's loading, I just wanted to show you again in my file structure on my hard drive, you'll see I have this third folder and this is where we store all of our weekly set lists. I like to date them by year, month, and date. Everything just stays in order. So here is my full weekly worship set list. This is the one coming up for this week. So you'll see we have one, two, three, four, five songs. Um, we have um, all of our tracks laid out down here in arrangement view. And again, I just like to be able to see everything in chronological order. That's why I'm an arrangement view guy. I'm not really a session view guy. Um, and I just find when it comes to throwing in all of our MIDI cues for Pro Presenter that you'll see here and our lighting uh, cues for our light key, which is our lighting software, it's just so easy to kind of drop in those cues wherever we want them. We can create some really amazing smooth transitions in worship. And since we have such a tiny team, uh, we only have like two people in our tech booth, a sound guy and a media person, we can still have some complex uh, cues when it comes to lyrics, video, and lights throughout our worship service. So all I have to do to build this set is I go into my Ableton Live browser, I go to my individual song sessions, and then I'll find a song, for example, You Are Life. So then I'll select the You Are Life project here, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and drag that down into the timeline. And then it's pretty simple to just easily rearrange these tracks to where they need to go. So let's say we wanted to just add this on to the end of this session. I'll just kind of like zoom in here. I'll paste all of my top tracks. I always keep the markers, tempo, click, guide, and MP3 files and Pro Presenter cues all on the top of my project. This is my personal preference. And then down here, all of my tracks from Loop Community, I will go over and um, find where those need to be pasted. So 1457, and I'll make sure that's on the right track here. And there we go, that song is in my set list. So it really just takes like a couple clicks and drags uh, with the mouse copying, pasting, and that song's where it needs to go. I'll just go ahead and delete these redundant tracks right there. And now that song is in the session. So that's how I pull in those individual projects into my Ableton Live set list. That's how we build out our full set list. So I'm gonna go ahead though and undo those last few moves since we don't need that in this set list for this Sunday. So I just wanna show you a few uh, neat little things we have set up within our set list. So the first thing we have at the beginning of the set list, we, these are some of our cues for our production elements in worship. So we have a pre-service cue. So we go to this locator, you know, we hit play. It's gonna hit these Pro Presenter and lighting cues. And what happens is it's telling Pro Presenter, hey, play our pre-service playlist. Uh, bring up the pre-service slides, like the announcement slides. Uh, make sure the house lights are up for people walk in. Bring down the stage lights. So we have the same thing too for our, the time of our service that we call the host time, where a pastor comes up and you know talks to the congregation, gives announcements. This is usually after the first worship set. Um, then we have a bumper video cue as well. So Ableton will actually tell Pro Presenter to like black out the lights, pull up the bumper view video for the sermon. Um, and uh, it just like, it's all seamless. And again, we don't have a huge production team. We only have one person running this, but they can create simultaneous cues because of the way we have it set up in Ableton Live. Then at the beginning of the service, we have cues for make the stage go black, bring the worship, uh, the house Intro lights down two, for worship. Three, and then right on the downbeat of the song, all of the, the right slides um, and then the right lighting cues come in. And then we like to have flexibility too between songs. So we'll get to the end of this song right here. And what we do is we use some just generic ambient pads at the end of the song that we just keep looping. And um, we just keep the tempo of the click either you know the same tempo as the song that we just came out of or the tempo of the song that we're gonna go into. So in this case, let's have it be the same as the song we're gonna go into. And I'll have Ableton's click here. 
And this whole section that you see right here, it's just gonna keep looping because when I hit this little cue, it's actually gonna bring us back to this locator here. So I can speak or pray, do whatever I want during this portion of the worship uh, service. And then when we're ready, we hit two to get to song two, and then it'll start um, counting off the next song One. and hitting any of those uh, different two. production cues we have. So that's it. My Ableton Live workflow is fairly simple. I get the tracks from Loop Community. I create an individual song session for every song in our worship library. And then on a weekly basis, we drag those songs into one worship set list in arrangement view. Um, we add in our cues, uh, our locators. Um, we were able to build in that flexibility for more spontaneous moments in worship. Um, and then we're set to go. If you want to learn more about Ableton Live and how to run a click, tracks, and automate lyrics and lighting in worship, then check out my free Ableton Live Masterclass for worship leaders. I'm going to show you even in more depth, I know we covered a lot in this video, but I'll go into more depth in my Masterclass, basically my seven step process that I use to build our Ableton Live sessions every week for worship. So we're going to link that Masterclass below this video, so check it out.